Hey everybody, my name is Justin. This is a weekly video series that I do where I pick a financial metric or something off the financial statements and talk about it. Usually it's something I typically use when I'm evaluating companies and stocks in the stock market. I'm an accountant by day and I'm trying to use my accounting knowledge and background to provide some information to you guys so you can go out and use this information when you're looking at stocks in the market. And I've talked about different things in past videos. I've talked about ROIC which is return on invested capital. I've talked about working capital. I've talked about gap versus non-gap and what to look for. And this one, this video today, I wanna to talk about book value. I think it's extremely important as an investor to understand what book value is when you're looking at a company. So in this video, I wanna talk about what exactly book value is, why it's important, and then how to use it when you're analyzing stocks that are in the stock market. So you're gonna to wanna to watch this whole thing all the way through. There's a lot of good information in this video. And if you get some value out of the video, please hit that like button. It really helps out the channel a lot. And I really, really appreciate it. So let's just jump right into the video. And let's first talk about what is book value. If you watch other videos of mine where I'm analyzing stocks, uh, I always talk about book value as uh, really being assets minus liability. So this goes back to the balance sheet. So there are three financial statements that we look at as investors to you know evaluate a company. We have the balance sheet, which is a snapshot in time. And then we look at the cash flow statement and the income statement. Those are both statements that look at a specific period of time and give you information about that specific period. What's really nice about the balance sheet, since it's a snapshot in time, you can look at the last quarter balance sheet and it gives you, you know, how many assets are on the balance sheet, how many liabilities, what is the equity and how a balance sheet works is it's assets equals liabilities plus equity. So that's how it works there. And book value, like I said before, is assets minus liability. So essentially what that means is book value equals equity. And I hear a lot of times people talking about, you know, the fair value of a company is the equity on the balance sheet. And that's semi true. Uh, I would actually say a value of a company is really the enterprise value. I'm not going to get into a deep dive on what that is. It's kind of the market cap on steroids. <laughs> I would say I'll, I'll probably pick that as maybe a different financial term in the future to talk about in one of these weekly video series. But when you look at equity, how I personally look at it is if I'm a shareholder of a company or a potential shareholder, whatever that equity is on their balance sheet, that's what's kind of left over if the company were to completely shut down today. So let's say Apple says, oh, we're gonna stop all operations. We're just gonna fold the company. So what they do is they have all their assets, so stuff that they own, and then they have liabilities, which is stuff that they owe, and whatever's left over after paying all their bills that they owe left over in there is basically your equity. And that's what is owed to the shareholders. So if you're looking at a balance sheet in particular and you see negative equity, that can be a huge red flag. What that means since the balance sheet is assets equals liabilities plus equity, that means the liability portion is much higher than the equity, which is a bad thing. So why is book value so important for us investors? If we see a company's book value grow going, going forward, or at least historically, if we look at the last five years, I like to look at the last five to 10 years financial statements of a company. And if that book value is growing, that's telling me that equity is growing. That tells me that assets is growing compared to liabilities. But if it's going the other direction and you see equity shrinking, that is problematic because that means liabilities are growing. So how can we use this as investors when we're looking at companies? What are exactly we're looking for? So I've already talked about having positive book value or positive equity on the, the balance sheet is a good thing. What I personally like to do when I'm looking at companies, I, I like to look at four different growth metrics. Uh, one of those is sales, one of those is earnings, one of those is free cash flow, and the fourth one is book value. So when I'm looking at a company, particularly a growing company, 
I wanna see all those growth metrics kind of being close to each other growing. So for example, uh, I'll throw up one from Facebook that I was analyzing here recently. And you can see the, the four charts here. The one on the very right is book value. And if you look at the one on the very left, that's sales. Uh, the next one is earnings. The third one is cash flow. And if you look at sales and book value, for example, which is the first and the fourth one, you can see that they're actually on the same trajectory. You look at cash flow, you look at earnings, they're also on the trajectory up. So that is a good thing. Now, if we want to get to the nitty gritty of it, here's a, another snapshot where I look at the CAGR or the annualized uh, rate of each one of these over the last five years. You can see that book value has grown about 21%. You can see free cash flow has grown 19%. And this is per year over the last five years. While you look at sales and earnings, they've been growing about 30%. Uh, so fairly close, nothing out of the ordinary. Where it would be a red flag for me if I looked at sales, for example, I see sales going up 30%, but I'm looking at book value and it's only going up one or 2%. I would really question why in the world is the sales just going up so much, but the book value is not even close to that. That, that would tell me that uh, the liability side is growing quite a bit compared to total assets, which would cause you know, concern. Of, and I would have to dig into it and to figure out why and kind of what's going on. Another really great thing about book value is you can actually calculate what the book value per share is and again let's take a look at facebook as of this last quarter they had about 138 billion dollars worth of equity on their balance sheet and they had roughly about 2.8 billion of outstanding shares so if you take total equity which is the 138 billion you divide it by total shares outstanding which is the 2.8 you get roughly about 49 dollars per share book value. So, so what that means for Facebook today, it's trading around $370 a share, but the book value itself that you're, that you're getting for that company is around $49. So that would be problematic if the company were to fold today. That means you would only expect to get $49 for that one share, but you paid $370. You might ask, Hey, J money, uh, that's a problem, right? And, uh, Yes and no. I would say yes, that's a problem because you got to know that you're actually in some ways overpaying for that business. However, when you're buying a company like Facebook that is growing a lot, you're talking 20% per year or more uh, over the last, I mean, you're talking last five years, they've been growing well over 30% uh, per year. So they're having you know, great growth rates. They have expected great growth rates going in the future. You're expected to pay more for that company overall. So when you're looking at a company, it's even better if you can uh, try to calculate book value per share over you know the last five years and looking at the average each year to see if that is going up or not. So if you can, book value per share is really the best way to, to value a company when you're looking at book value. And I even go as far to say, if you can, when you're looking at sales and earnings and cash flow, if you can get it down per share as well, that's really a great way to look at a company, especially historically, if you can. And lastly, I'll just say that book value or equities, extremely, extremely important. Uh, whenever you're looking at a company, you should always be looking at the balance sheet. First thing I do is always look at how much cash and how much long-term debt the company has. But during my valuation process, I always, always look at the total equity of the company. And in general, you want to see that being a positive number and you want to see that uh, growing each year over the last five to 10 years. Uh, it kind of gives you a good comfort level as a shareholder or a potential shareholder that you're, if you invest in a company and they still have good numbers that are expected to go on to the future, you should see your book value grow as well. It means your equity is growing and your, and your value that you put into the company, you're getting more value back in the end. So hopefully this video was very valuable to you guys. I will continue doing these each week. If there's a specific topic or something maybe on the financial statements that you're confused about that you want me to talk about, throw it down in the comment section. I read every single one down there. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll catch you guys on the other side. Take care and uh, God bless.